pick my nose anymore. Hey, yeah, nope, you can't pick your nose anymore. We're live. Let me see if I sit here like this, if I look like this, if I look at the camera. Is that it? Yep, that's the camera. Are we on? Are we live? We're looking good. We're look, <laughs> looking quite dapper. Hey, guys, how are you? It's Jeff Gelman of Solid Canine Training. This is my, actually, twice a week. This is a Saturday special, Saturday special show. And um, we're going to be using this microphone in here, so you have to talk louder in this microphone here. Mm -hmm. And this is my Q&A, and I do a, I try to do at least a Monday Q&A, and then I always try to do a, um, uh, one more, it all depends if I'm in town, all depends on what my schedule is. Um, and I think it's really, really important, though, that I connect with everybody, and I want as many people to get help um, okay. as possible. So the uh, way this works is you've got a chat box. Mm -hmm. So write, write in your little thing there. You've got in the right-hand side, you've got where it says say something. You can say something, and that's what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be asking me if you ask a question then. Um, and that's where Wiki Big Lashes says, hey, everybody, you can you know check out Wiki Big Lashes. She actually is going to be on Facebook at 9 o'clock. That's my wife. Hey, Brooklyn's Toy Review, how are you? If you're in Brooklyn, New York, I love Brooklyn, New York. Love it, love it, love it, love it. I could live there. I could absolutely live there. Actually, I had a place in Park Slope. I had a tiny little office in Park Slope before. Um, cause I do a ton of business in, in New York. I do so much, so much business. So, oh great. No Swansea. Oh, Brooklyn. Maybe that's your name. Brooklyn's in the house. Got it. Got yeah. it. Okay. I got it. But we got lady T's from Brooklyn. I get it. I get it. Swansea is nice. So anyway, anyway, so this is what we're going to do. Um, Joe Sue says, hello. This it's is what Josh, we're going to Josh, remember? Well, he, well, I call him Joe Sue. You can call him Josh. It was opposite. You were calling him Josh, and I was saying Joe Sue, and then it's Josh. All right. So that's the name. That's anyway, okay. okay. Anyway, there's a great bakery um, in Brooklyn in Park Slope um, that I went to, and I forgot that I forgot the name of it. I forgot the name of it. But anyway, here we go. If you're brand new to my show, my name is Jeff Gelman of Solid Canine Training, and I've got a dog training facility up in Providence, Rhode Island, and we specialize in aggression rehab and behavior modification. We obviously can train all your on-leash and off-leash obedience as well, but we specialize in a lot of hardcore anxiety, fear, nervousness, anxiousness, um, aggression issues with dogs. Thanks, honey. And... Uh, we're good at stopping unwanted behaviors. I think to remember that most dog trainers, this is not a diss to dog trainers. They're, they train certain commands, which is fine. Every dog needs to learn those commands. I mean, everybody should learn them. Not a lot of dog trainers though, stop unwanted behaviors and even fewer stop reactivity and aggression. Um, they just don't have the skill set, which is not a diss on them. It just takes a lot of practice and a lot of experience with lots of, you know, aggressive, you know, aggressive dogs. So, if you're brand new to my world, you're going to hear me talk a lot about punishment on this show. The reason why we talk about punishment so much, punishment is not abuse. Punishment is, the, is part of the spectrum of dog training. You've got rewards, which motivates dogs to do more of what you want. And then you've got punishment, which stops dogs from doing what you don't want. And that's the only way to stop an unwanted behavior is through a punisher. If a, someone wants to say, no, you could only do reward only, you can talk till you're blue in the face, but you will just be blue in the face. And most of us that have done that know that, that it has limitations. 90% of my day is based on rewards because um, we want to train dogs all kinds of wonderful things. But when it comes to stopping things, that's where punishment comes in. So then you need to learn how to properly punish a dog in a helpful way that is also going to work. And that's the magic of learning proper punishment. So Linda, let's get mm -hmm. going. This one's from Jake. Hey, Jake. When passersby on bicycles ride up behind us and my dog doesn't hear them coming, she will break heel and jump out of the way as they pass. Is this common? How hard do I correct for this response? Um, well, so you, number one, yeah, your dog is your dog is startled. I mean, if they're riding right up your dog's ass, I mean, I'd like to think they would make you know leeway. What you could do is, I like to heal my dogs on the left, but if my dog was in the middle of a passing lane or a bike lane, I would actually switch the sides of my dog. Why? God forbid a bicyclist didn't see my dog, right? And my dog got hit. So, you know, I, I, I wouldn't want to be that now. But if we're talking about if a bike goes within, you know, 
two meters, like two meters away from your dog, that's another, that's another story. Um, and that's just by reinforcing the heel command and proofing it around lots of bicycles. So next. Next. This one's from Debbie. My Aussie is just a year old. How do you get him to take treat out of your hand? He grabs like he's never eaten before. Okay. So Debbie, number one. So, um, the way you do it is number one is first of all, if your dog is going to do that, stop giving him treats, right? Because every time your dog does, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you the answer, but I just want also people to understand like my you know, training philosophy in general. Every time you allow your dog to successfully get away with that, you are reinforcing the command. So theoretically, and I know you don't want to, but that's the point, whether you want to or not, if the dog is doing it, you are actually training the dog to do it. So this is what you do. Number one, you can have the food in your hand and you can keep a closed fist just like that. And then your dog will most likely at some point go, oh, that doesn't work. And then you can release like this. But you can also, if you want to, you can just do little tiny morsels or don't let go. Or you can correct the dog, correct the dog. So you know, um, and the way you would correct the dog is I would actually, you can bonk the dog, which is a towel wrapped up. Everyone, everyone should actually learn how to use a bonker, which is a wrapped up towel. And what you would be doing is you'd be, you know, technically bonking it on the head and you're not going to hurt your dog. It's just a towel. If anybody struggles with that, like your hands getting bit, right? So, um, that's what you're going to do next. Next from Kiki. Thanks for all your information and WWJD. Love them. Oh, awesome. Kiki. Thanks for being a fan. <clears throat> Next one's from Chevy. Hi, peeps. My GSD is super sensitive to prong corrections. Sometimes it sends her over the edge and she gets really hectic. A trainer recommended the four millimeter prong as it's more blunt, I guess. Thoughts? Um, I mean, I've never used more than a three millimeter prong collar in my life, and I've trained up to 200 pound dogs. So. 80 kilo dogs, 85 kilogram dogs. So, you know, I've, 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 I just, I, I, I can't imagine using a four millimeter prong collar. There's no use for it. What you can do is you could um, just better condition the dog to the, to the prong. Sometimes you can add a, a link, maybe. I just don't want it to slide down dramatically. If it's too super snug on the dog, it's, it's just for full clarification, if people are not used to understand prongs, um, first of all, they should be blunt. If you don't have a, if, if, if you shouldn't have a sharp prong collar. So prong collars shouldn't be sharp. So let's get that out of the world way. And also prong collars don't hurt dogs. So, you know, um, I would just better condition your dog to the, to the prong. The last thing you want to do with a prong collar is put it on your dog and start popping it. Most, some dogs can handle that. A lot of dogs cannot. So you want to better collar condition your dog. And I've got a video on my YouTube channel that shows that. Next. Also, there's there's a that little dollar sign right there. When you click on that, you become a super chatter and it's a donation. And the then your question goes to the top and it automatically gets well, it gets first in line. Next. Um, Brooklyn's Toy Review. Yep. I've been using your advice on leash pop and e-collar to stop the dog, my dog from barking at other dogs on walks and it is working out wonderfully. Awesome, Brooklyn, thanks. That's, I only recommend what works too. So if you're brand new to my world, and I keep saying that because we get new fans every day, is all my advice works because we've done it thousands of times. I only give advice on things that I know about, that I've proven, um, that we've, we've done in our training center hundreds, if not thousands of times. If I don't know something, I will tell you I don't know something. But when it comes to dog training, I don't know everything. But when it comes to pet dogs, there's only so much, there's only, you know, there's not a million things to learn. Next. Um, Josh. No, Josh. wait. Oh, Josh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Josh, yeah. I saw two. Um, when can I start using an e-collar on a dog? She's really calm in temperament. By the way, I finally got her to stop jumping over the fence. I ended using the e-collar on her very low level. She's so shy of five. Okay. So the five isn't the shyness. This is the thing though, for jumping over the fence, I never really care about the level. You can start using, so remote collars, shock collars, they're not last resorts for dogs. They're not for if nothing else works. They're not for mean dogs. They're not for stubborn dogs. They're not for, for, for aggressive dogs. They're for all dogs. You know, we start dogs on remote collars because what it does is it allows you to communicate with your dog up to a mile away on some of them 
um, very clear communication once the dog is trained on it. With high levels of distraction, and there's nothing else out there that can do it as effectively. There just, there, there just isn't. For your average pet dog owner who doesn't spend eight hours a day training their dog. Um, so you can start immediately. Next. Mm, Maria. My soon-to-be four-month-old GSD whimpers, cries, whines, barks if I am out of her line, line, sorry, line of sight. Leave the room. How can I correct? Okay. So you've got a dog that's 16 weeks old. It absolutely is acting normal. The best thing you can start doing is start teaching being separate from you and being alone and not allowing that dog to follow you around. Definitely not be picking up that dog. Remember, your dog is small now, but it's going to be huge. It should be on the floor. Um, what you can do is if the, if the dog's in a crate, because if you leave the room, a 16-week-old dog should be in a crate. And if it makes noise, you can go up to it and you can say, quiet. And you can hit the top of the crate. You can hit the front of the crate. And a lot of people, trust me, I'm very aware of the conversation out there, guys. Some people are going to be like, that's mean to do. You'll make the dog afraid. No, you won't. That's a called imagined harm. And you don't make the dog afraid because we do it all the time. And we've never made a dog afraid because of that. Um, you won't ruin the trust in the dog. Why? Because we do it all the time and dogs are fine. And the bottom line is, 16 week old dog, when you leave the room, if you don't stop the whimpering, it will always do it. They don't grow out of it. What they do is the human pops back in the room and then they're like, see, my whimpering works. Now, if you wait till the whimpering is over, like a lot of people suggest, I'd be like, and how long is that? An hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, 15 minutes. So instead, quiet, pop. The dog is whimpering by choice historically. If it has to go out to the bathroom, which is an option, but I'm assuming that you've already understood its bathroom routine and it just went out to the bathroom. If not, obviously it could be the bathroom, but historically your dog is just acting like a 16 week old dog does, which is whimper when owners leave the room. Next. Um, Josh says on the e-collar was enough. I don't want to use it on her again until it's safe to do so. Okay. It's safe. It's safe. You can mess up a dog with a clicker. We use clickers. We do food training. You can mess up a dog with food training. You can me mess up a dog with um, an inconsistent schedule. You can mess up the dog with um, family members not being on the same page. You can mess up the dog with praise. That's how we teach biting dogs, by the way, guys. You know those dogs that like run after the bad people and bite them? The first 90% of their training is 100% praise-based, literally reward-based training with mostly physical touch and toys. Next. Um, Brooklyn's Toy Review with pressure on, pressure off works absolutely perfect. Awesome. Thanks. This one's from Susan. I'm trying to start my own dog training business, but I have a fear that clients won't see results because they don't put in time or effort. Do you have any tips to get over this? Yes, yeah, Susan. They want your 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 first of all, your fear is not unfounded, but there's gonna that's that's one of probably a thousand fears you're gonna have. You're gonna have a ton of fears. How about this? How about if nobody hires you? How about if you post up a video of your work and one thousand people tell you that you suck? How about if people say you're mean and abusive and you don't know what you're doing? How about if people say you're ugly, you're overweight, they make fun of your ethnicity? How about if people say, you know, I'll give you a million, how about if people call you a dirty Jew? How about if people call you the N-word? How about if people call you a, the C-word? How about if people say that you, you know, you shouldn't be dog training, go back to where, whatever you used to be doing? How about if like, name it, name it, name it, name it. It is all going to happen to you. All of these things will happen to you. What happens when you get a death threat? When you, what happens when someone threatens you with sexual harm? It will all happen to you, especially if you make videos. So I do consulting. That's actually how I make a living. And some people might be like, oh, geez, you're being a little bit extreme. No. Talk to any of my colleagues, especially my female colleagues. It's horrific out there in the dog training world. It's literally the Wild West. So I would suggest you join my Patreon page where you type it in, patreon.com slash solid canine training. And if you join that, uh, you can ask questions, get very detailed answers, as well as you can also get Skype consulting for me. But I help people build businesses. 
that's what I do. I mean, that's sort of my career other than, you know, that's, you know, what I do. So, so, but start your own business, but that's only the one of many fears and that will happen. But if you pre-qualify clients, that happens less. Next. It's from Jamal. Hey, Jamal. Yeah, he's on my Patreon page. Next. Hello, Gelman's. Curious to know if you recommend us putting up jumping corrections on our social media or just YouTube. Um, you can put up both, Jamal. Put them up on both, but just be prepared. Be prepared, especially if you're using a, a punisher to stop, which is how you stop jumping. Be prepared for the backlash. So do, we can talk about it, um, on Jamal, on, on your on your. Jamal gets monthly Skypes from me. So he's a small business owner that's on a monthly plan with me. He gets monthly Skypes and we talk every month and we work through the issues. And, um, but, um, you, you know, you, you, you might be ready for that or you might not be, but let, let's, but if you're going to do it, put them on both next. This question is from Robin. Hey Robin. How would your dogs react if someone entered your property? Um, depending which dog. So Mac lives outside will bark. And my other dogs will ignore them. And I have a dog that will do what is asked of her if need be done. But she's a very social dog. So she will only do something if there's a direct threat to me or my family or on command. But she, if somebody just walks in, she is social because she's, she's a family protection dog. And that's what they're supposed to be like. They're not supposed to just bite everything that moves. So, but then I have a dog, I have another dog that just like is, is not so trained, but he'll bite because that's what I, but that's a different situation. So, but I, but the dogs you see me with Kira and girl are very social. Next. Another question from Robin. Yep. Arousal question. Follow up to Patreon. When I, when correcting arousal, do I, do I correct for arousal, which leads to reaction or even if the dog's ears perk up, just looking at something. Yes. If you've got a reactive dog, you, 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 you eliminate the arousal at the beginning of the sequence, which would be the perk up. Next. Um, Jimmy. Oh, my God. Or OMG, actually. I can finally join this chat. Hey, Jimmy. How are you, buddy? Glad you made it. <laughs> Thanks. Kyler. Yep. When I correct my seven-month-old when walked, a.k.a. removing him from a situation from when he is misbehaving, he cries all the way back home. How to correct this? So that's not a correction. So don't remove your dog from a situation. Address the issue immediately and then move on. Address the issue immediately move on. So I'm not quite sure specifically what it is, but removing him from a situation when he's misbehaving, we don't do that. We correct the misbehaving in the moment. And then we continue on with the walk. So I don't do timeouts. I don't do, oh, you're a bad dog. You're going home. Um, I don't do, you know, go to your corner. Or, I, mean, I don't do any of that stuff. I don't yell and I don't scream. It's like, that was wrong. Let's keep moving on. So train your dog how to properly walk. I don't know how you're walking your dog. I don't know the training tools you're using, things like that. But the whining is just arousal. The whining is arousal. Next. Um, Kayla. Yep. Can you stop or fix reactivity and aggression or does training only help better manage it? Or in other words, lower the threshold. This discussion came up with a couple of my trainer buds. So you can stop it. You can stop it. You know, there, I, there's always management in life. First of all, if you only management, if you only managed it, it's not that bad, right? But yes, you can stop it. There are those of us out there who stop it. Now, can you permanently stop aggression? You wouldn't know until the dog was dead. Can you permanently stop any obedience? Can you permanently stop anything forever? Only death does that. Only death does that. So we only know when the dog actually dies and we look backwards if we stopped it. But when you've got reactivity and you can go a year, three years without it and say it cropped up again, address it again. It's no big deal. I mean, do we stay physically fit? Do we stay physically fit our whole lives? So I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't do drugs. All right? It's been a long time, close to 30 years. Smoking, I've never smoked. I've been sober from alcohol and drugs for 27 years. I know for a fact I'm never going to drink alcohol. I know for a fact I'm never going to do drugs again. I know that for a fact. But I'm a human being. And I can look into the future. Dogs can't, 
right? But am I going to always make the right food choices? Hell no. Am I always going to be like uh, certain things? So with our dogs, the big thing is if you had to manage something, it's not the worst thing in the world. But yes, there are behaviors out there, extreme ones, that can be stopped. Ronin, my Turkish Kengel, attacked humans and dogs. He bit me every day. I fixed that six years ago. It has never creeped up in six years, ever, not even close to it. Other dogs, nope, didn't work. Why? They're wild animals that we've domesticated that are genetically dis, you know, disposed to do certain things. Killing things is one of them. Being reactive is another. We've domesticated them. So, you know, it can be a challenge sometimes with some dogs. Next. Um, oh, Kyler says seven month GSD. Okay, cool. Um, Holly. Hey, Holly. Howdy from AZ, Arizona. Jeff yep. and lovely Linda. Yep. Hi. Hey. Hope it's cooling down there a bit. Was only 101 here today. Right. We had it nice and cool. Next. Maria, how do you pop the leash when correcting? Um, hard. You pop it for you pop it firmly. So I got videos on that. I mean, a pop is not just a pull, it's a pop and a release. But also it's got to be with a tool, so a prong collar. You can also use a remote collar to be a pop. So the leash connected to the prong collar is where the popping coat goes. So you wanna always you always wanna correct the beginning of the sequence of the bad behavior. But a pop is I mean it's a classic leash pop. Pop. It's a very classic move. It's a textbook move in dog training. Um, and it's we show it all the time. I've got videos that show our work. Um, I don't know if I've got any slow motion how-to videos that show like step-by-step -step how to pop because it's such a natural thing. But just watch some of our videos and you can see us how we pop. And maybe I'll do like, I'll have Joelle demonstrate it, how to pop a leash. She's my intern. I'll have her do a video on how to pop a leash. All right, next. Um, but a little Jimmy got Jimmy. on to answer that question. My dog keeps biting the leash when I train her. How can I get her to stop and focus? Okay, forget about the focus part. How do you get your dog to stop biting a leash? Get yourself a pet convincer through a punisher, number one. Get yourself a pet convincer. Pet convincer is compressed air. It's a little thing of compressed air. I don't have it here. Called a pet corrector, pet convincer. Dog bites the leash, and then you would just spray the, spray the compressed air somewhere in the head area like that, and the dog will be startled and it'll let go of the leash. What you can also do is a, a, a an old dog training trick is you have somebody walk behind you with a dressage whip, and um, a stockyard whip. Some people are going to struggle with this concept. You're whipping the dog. It's like, no, you're not whipping the dog. And as soon as the dog, dog bites the leash, they get a swat on the opposite ass cheek and they let go of it. That that literally fixes it instantly. Next. This one's from Stephanie. Yep. OMG, why does my GSD eat poop? Um, well, Stephanie, obviously, so how, the question is, how does your dog, it doesn't matter why. How about that? You're not going to hear me talk about the why, because why? Because dogs eat shit. That's why. Dogs eat animals, dogs eat shit, they eat cat shit, they eat baby poop, because they're dogs. So the question is, how do I stop my dog from eating poop? Because there's a lot, every, every, every dog expert out there will give you some reason why. And my response is always like, okay, great, thanks, wonderful. Now I'm more educated. How do I stop it? All we really care about is how to stop something, right? And you don't need to know the why to know the, to know the how. You just need to know the how. The way you stop it is with a remote collar, yep, a shock collar, and it's on the dog, and make sure you get a good quality one like e-collar technology, Dogtra, Garmin. You can eat, we don't like to train on sport dogs, but you can train on a sport dog for that because it's going to be high and hard and uncomfortable, and the dog goes down to eat the poop, and you, yep, you stimulate, shock the dog, it's a punisher, and it hurts, and the dog stops eating the poop. Next. But I've read every you know, all this other stuff about putting additives in and doing all this other stuff. And it's like, no, next. Uh, this one's from Haley. Hey. Rumi doesn't discipline her dogs. Is it fair to correct mine for doing things that others are doing, barking at windows, etc.? It's so tough. Um, it is find new roommates. Next. Rebecca. Yep. I have a two-year-old dog and now got a new puppy. The two-year-old likes to graze with his food throughout the day, and the puppy loves to shovel his meal. How do I keep them from fighting over food? Okay, so for Rebecca, number one, immediately you should be creating both. First of all, that puppy should be in a crate. Both dogs should be in a crate, but a puppy especially should be in a crate. 
Don't allow your dog to free graze. So this is how this is how my food protocol works. Also, your puppy can be using its food for daily kibble. Okay, you can be using the dog's food to train. That's what we do. We train with the dog's daily food. So, but what you do is don't allow your dog to graze anymore. It's not a buffet. Your dog gets 10 minutes. My, most dogs eat in three minutes or less. Most dogs that are, the, are a good weight will eat in three to five minutes. And if they don't eat, then you take away their food and then you give it back to them at dinner. So you find out what your daily food is. If it's two cups a day, they get one cup for breakfast, one cup for dinner. If they don't eat it in 15 minutes, it disappears. Your puppy as well. Make sure you get into the habit of structured eating, especially where there's puppy, or I assure you, you'll be calling me in six months saying you're having massive dog fights and I don't know what to do. So start doing that. Next. Um, Haley, and yep. by tough, I mean the arousal caused by the other dogs. Tough to keep mine in I agree, check. I agree 100%. So you either have a discussion with your roommate or you move out. Next. Megan. Hey, Megan. Hey, Megan. Love Megan. you. Dog will be in, in a nice heel, but if we are passing a dog with certain energy, she will hesitate and or try to avoid, okay? Or work through it safe. So it's I'm, safe. I'm glad that your dog tries to avoid that conflict. That's that's good. Hesitate, that's not the worst thing. Just you lead your dog and walk past, give your dog a little bit of space as well. Your dog is saying, man, I'm uncomfortable, saying thanks for letting me know. You don't say that. That's a nonverbal communication and just move along. Next. Mm -hmm. Uh, knock them. Yep. Am I saying it right? Russ, just say Russ. Russ. Yep. Uh, Susan, go to T3. You can go to T3 as well. Next. Uh, Keith. Yep. Could physical touch and too much affection become a problem? My dog is seven months old and I'm home six to seven hours a day. So I want to make sure being available for my dog isn't going to become an issue. Yes, it's a major problem, Keith. I would say that, that over-touching dogs creates massive amounts of anxiety. You can also train your dog to be, you can reinforce aggression with physical touch. Gentle physical touch, not abusing, not hitting your dog. Yes, you get a dog that's so reliant on you, it can't be alone. And it becomes a pain in the ass to be around. So what you, your, your dog will be fine. Your dog will be fine. Like, you you know, interact with your dog, but you don't have to always constantly be touching your dog. So too much physical touch absolutely can mess up your dog. Next. Uh, Stephanie, when I put my e-collar on my dog, she's really good. Like she knows she has to be. Then when taking off, she goes back to being bad. What do I do? Um, train your dog. Do a better job training your dog and make sure your dog's not cower conditioned. So number one, how long have you been eat cower training? It's, and it's no different than food training. It's no different than food training. If you always rely on food and, and then you finally get off of food, they don't listen. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. So with remote cower training, you want to make sure you've done lots of reps, tons of reps. You want to make sure that you don't just put that collar on when you're training. It's all part of life. You wake up in the morning, you put the collar on, you rotate it every four to six hours. You go to bed at night, you take the you take the collar off. You charge you charge it up overnight, and boom, you start it all over again. You want to make sure during the day that you work your dog a lot, ask a lot of your dog. You also want to make sure you get up to punishment or correction mode, which is means you're not prompting anymore. You stop prompting your dog. The dog is only it hears the word no and then a punisher for non-compliance. And you, the lack of a punisher for non-compliance of a known command in any training philosophy, no matter what your tools of, of, of choice are, is the downfall is the downfall of a trained dog. But if you haven't been training your dog for a good solid year on a on a remote collar um, consistently, um, it doesn't take a year to do it. But dogs get collar wise. Next. Uh, Jose, is it bad to keep e collar on all day? I'm um, just. Uh, Switch it every four to six hours. The dog can get pressure sores. Next. Caitlin. Hey. Jeff, I found the 20 hours in the crate rule with my eight-week-old puppy home. Now she's 18 weeks and goes in wonderfully at night and for naps. How many hours should they be in at five to six months? At five to six months, well, by five to six, first of all, Caitlin, congratulations. So for five to six months, whenever you're not working the dog, so whenever you're not walking the dog, interacting, sort of playing with the dog, uh, or actively training the dog or doing duration. So right now my dogs are next to me on a place bed. So if your dog in five or six months, your dog should be able to do place for a couple of hours, right? Um, then the dog doesn't have to be in the crate as much, but whenever you're not home and whenever the dog's unsupervised, it should be crated. Next. Okay. 
um, when, and same person, Caitlin, when do they get to the point where they should have more freedom in the house? She's housebroken, but definitely still wants to chew and find things to get into. Caitlin, let's call it years. Don't, that's not, to me, that's not the master plan. The master plan of my dogs are not to, not to let them just walk around my house randomly. I'm, I get it. Most families do. That's what they want. I should be more like helpful to most families, I guess. But I also have seen it work out horrific. So my idea is this. Why can't your dog be in the same general area as you, but off to the side and you always know where it is? And you always know where it is. So, you know, but at five or six months or up until a year old, I wouldn't let a dog walk free. And destruction is destruction. They could die. Next. Uh, Jimmy. Should I start using prong collar on my 11 and 12 week dog? No, wait, wait a few more weeks. Next. Um, Jose, yep. seven months GSD, bad recall, knows her commands, but just started her e-collar and listens with it on, but once off, won't. No. Is it okay to leave it on all day until she gets used to it? Yeah. So I would never take off a, 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 a if you did food training, we do food training. And even at seven months old, they're not going to listen without the food either usually. Recall, you need to do hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of times, and you need to proof it. Dog training is, it's like, it's like sort of going to the gym for a month and expecting to be physically fit. It takes lots of repetitions. So there's not too many seven-month-old dogs that have got incredible recall. Now, can I show you some? Of course, we've produced some. But your average family pet, and we're dog trainers, big deal, right? So, but your average family pet with your average family, they need to work on it for a, for a, for a while. For a while. So your dog's not going to listen. So don't expect it. Don't expect it. And always keep that collar on when you're doing recall or else you're going to have, you're going to have these fails. And every time it fails and you have no way to get your dog back to you, you're reinforcing your dog to not come back. Next. This one's from Angela. My one year GSD is still fearful of fireworks, thunder, and loud noises. Try recordings of the sounds doesn't bother her. Here's Here's it when outside, tries to run inside. Help, please. So what you can do, Angela, number one is a lot of dogs, you have to keep desensitizing the dog. Thunder is hard to duplicate because of the barometric pressure, but fireworks, you've got to play really, really loud in your house. But also there's pressure in the air, especially on a lot of these fireworks um, that the dog makes noise. Keep the dog on a leash. Number one, no dog should be off leash outside um, uh, uh, during the 4th of July. You'll lose your dog. Dogs will jump. Dogs will jump over fences. So, but what you're going to start doing is you can start doing training during thunderstorms, doing training during fireworks, doing some, you know, play tug, doing obedience work, doing food stuff. But if your dog is that fearful, have them go to a dog bed and lie down or put them in a crate and lie down. Next. Uh, this one's from Holly. Hey, Holly. Jeff, thank you for your PSA on using your phone and driving your car and correlating it to proper and meaningful punishment. Really needed that reminder on both. You're welcome, Holly. Robin, my dog will growl and bark at neighbors when they get close to our backyard. Should I, should I allow this or does it take away from my leadership role? Um, they're your neighbors and they're going to your backyard and they're your neighbors. I would tell your dog to shut up. Next. Stephanie says, sorry, I should have said that differently. Stephanie, I'm not sure what you're referring to, but if you said something inappropriate, I would have banned it. So you didn't say anything inappropriately. And if I ever seem mad, I'm never mad, guys. Guys, I'm not mad at all. I'm intense. I'm not mad at any of you. Or like, you know, no, this is, this is also like, it's also a freaking show. Do you know what I mean? I mean, the content is good. The content is accurate. The content is proven. Um, but there is some banter that goes back and forth on some of this stuff too, because it is a podcast. It is a show. It's a live show. And then it's recorded and then it's on Spotify and SoundCloud and iTunes. So there's some enter entertainment out there value. But it's Stephanie, if you're the one that was asking about the, the, the dog, you're being a new dog trainer, you didn't say anything wrong at all. You're, 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 you're 100% right with your concern. 100% right. That's a very accurate question that you gave. And I wasn't mad at all. I was just like, I use the, I'm using my platform to get a bigger message out there. And I use your question to sort of put a little lever in my soapbox. Next. Uh, Philippe. Pamela. What? Pamela. Pamela. Okay. Oh, no. Sorry. Which way? Right here? Oh, yeah. I'm, I went too far down. Go. Philippe. Don't mess me up. Philippe. My puppy's six months. 
barks when someone comes home. I bonked him and it helps for the moment. When I don't have the bonker in my hands, he keeps barking. Okay, so you shouldn't need the bonker in your hands. <laughs> so what you need to do is you need to say no and then bonk and you bonk hard. And then the word no has value. But you might have to do it, you're gonna have to do it possibly a couple of times. But I would also remote collar train your dog. It's six months, it's, it's six months. But if you just bonk once, and it just interrupted the dog instead of punished the dog, it might not have stuck. Next. Um, I hope I pronounced this right. Lunira. Yep. What is your opinion on, what is that, pilo or racket? If that, that's a term I'm not familiar with because it's too smart of a term for me. Mm. So next. Uh, Megan says, love but you guys. Hold on, but finish the question though. Oh, my dog will get hackles when passing by another dog, but he is not a reactive dog. He is very social, though I do correct the arousal, but oh. he has always been this... What is that? So, Lanero, why didn't you just say that from the beginning? Don't throw, guys. We don't know big words. Don't yet. throw fancy words at me. I'm a simple man. I'm a simple man. All right. So, I'm not mad at you either, by the way. So, the the, the thing is, is like, like hackles up. Just it's hackles up. Hackles up is called arousal. It's excitement. So, if it doesn't lead to anything, who gives a shit, right? Who cares? If your dog is not reactive, um, um then then leave it alone then leave it alone so if your dog's not a reactive if he's not aggressive if he's just minds his own business there's just a little bit of arousal but it doesn't lead anywhere you can leave it alone or you can correct it but my dog's hackles go up when they're when they see on um, the ocean because they know they're going to go swimming when they see a field because they know they're going to running on the way home from work they get they get their hackles go up so don't worry about it next um megan says love you guys yep. Yep. Stephanie, I've watched a ton of your dog walking videos and I tried them with a prong collar on mine and she's so stubborn and only does alligator rolls and acts like she's dying. I've been e-collar training about one month. Okay. So, um, it's, so we, we do get dogs that eat that, that alligator roll as well. And that's all drama. And that's just an indicator of what, who your dog is. It's not a prong collar. It's not a prong collar thing. I see dogs do that on slip leads, on martingales, on flat buckle collars. They've done it on head halters. I've seen dogs do that on chest harnesses. I've seen dogs do that on every single tool out there. That's your dog. That's a relatively simple, you know, uh, uh, five minute process to work your dog through. It's also possibly there's other relationship issues that are going on as well. Um, but that's, I don't have any videos on how to get a dog through crocodile rolls other than we see, we do see it, you know, um, on a lot of dogs. Next. Um, Pamela, Jeff, you are so right. I have had people come to me for training and give positive trainer credit for the training because people don't want anyone to know they went to a trainer that uses punishment. Yep. Kayla. Hey, Kayla. My reactive dog has been better since I've been really firm on e-collar corrections. Now, when he sees people, he will think for a second to growl. Uh-oh. Um, and then look away and begin to whine. How do I react? Stop the whining. I'm glad your dog's getting better. You can okay. We got to, um, gotta click on that. See what happens. Yep. So oh, Chevy. thanks Chevy for your $5. What do you got? Best way to keep off leash dogs with huh. useless owners away from my fear, aggressive dog. We only go on leash areas, but people are beep, but beep, beep. Yeah. Stupid fucks. So this is the, so this is the thing. So Chevy, thanks for the $5. Thanks for being a, for, just click down there. Yep. Thanks for being a super a super chatter. What I what I would do is this: is carry a walking stick with you, carry bear spray, um, carry an extra leash, and you can hit, um, hit the dog with a leash. Um, if anybody's brand new to this world or to our world or the wall to the world of being rushed by off leash dogs, dogs are being killed by off leash dogs being rushed. Could you imagine you take your dog out for a walk and you come back with no dog? or you're at the emergency room within 10 minutes, or you're breaking up a dog fight and you're, you're getting bit as well. So you have, to, you have to advocate for your dog. You've got to neutralize the threat. I don't care if the owner says it's a friendly dog. Get out of my space where, and, we're in, and we are in a leashed area and your dog is off leash. Control your dog. It's not your God-given right for your dog to come up to my dog, let alone me. So carry a walking stick. You can try doing that. Next. Okay. Did we... We didn't answer Kayla's though, did we? Reactive dog. Yes, we did. Oh, I didn't know so if you finished. Jay, yeah. I didn't know if you finished. Yep. Okay. Jay, 
Hi guys, Jeff. If a, if a dog is blowing through high stim on a mini, would you double? Would you do double receiver or go sport dog? Um, uh, you can get it. You can, Jay. I need more information, buddy. Um, but you it, check fit number one. But I would go with the eight hundred. Do the eight hundred, which is the boss. Try that. You should have an you should have an eight hundred on you anyway. So do an eight hundred next. This one's from Keith. Hey, Keith. Most of the time, a seventeen inside, twenty two outside is what my dog needs to stop unwanted behavior. Sometimes she's so stubborn, and even if I use forty, she won't stop until I use it a couple times. What's your option? It goes or to opinion. Okay, Keith. It goes to a hundred. Don't worry about the number. Got it? Don't worry about the number. Next. Um, Jose. Yep. How tight should the e-collar be? So it's you're the the, the e-collar comes with an owner's manual, and it tells you. Also, I've got videos that tells you very specifically. The remote collar has to be sitting very snug on the dog's neck so the contact points are making skin contact and stay in one spot and that it doesn't move around. If the collar box moves around like this, it's too loose. You should take the collar box and if you try to move it, it doesn't move. If you don't have that, you have improper fit, then therefore you're not using the equipment properly. Next. This one's from Rebecca. Hey, Rebecca. <clears throat> I want to start e-collar training my two dogs. How do you best go about training them together? I work full time, so there's only so much time in the day I have to separate them. You have to train one at a time, and then you train them together. So start with one at a time. Next. This one's from Megan. Do you care what kind of crate we use at your seminars? I have a collapsible, portable, soft crate. Just want to be sure that's acceptable. She does not try to escape crates. Megan? As long as you bring me a cup of coffee in the morning, okay, I want, um, I, I prefer it to be just a dark coffee with espresso, no sugar, no sweetener, no milk. You can bring any crate you want. Okay. I'll see you there. Bye. Hey, um, Jose says, thank you. Appreciate the tip. Yep. Next one is from Grant. What are your thoughts on the keeper collar by Learberg? Hashtag hidden prong. Um, I've never, I've never used one. I've never used one. I have no, I have no problem just using um, uh, a regular collar. I'm not a big fan of hiding collars. Just use a bandana. What, 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 what? Any cover. I'm not opposed to people using covers, but the cover of a prong collar. What it usually does is it, imp it impedes the actual, um, the the proper popping of the collar. So people use it because they don't want to get bashed by the public. That's why people use a, a cover, which is fine. I'd rather you put a bandana on the dog, though, so the collar can actually work as it's supposed to. Next. Javier, what is what kind of protocol do I start for aggression? My German Shepherd will snap at other dogs when they get near her. Um, well, number one is if your dog's on a leash, this is, a, this is a very long answer to this. The bottom line is this, is you need to advocate for your dog. So I'm not quite sure what the situation is, if it's an off-leash situation, if it's an on-leash situation, if these are dogs you know or don't know, but your dog is, is it could be uncomfortable. So if my dogs are on a leash walking next to me and a dog got into my space, it's not going to be good. I mean, my dogs will yield to me, but at some point it's like, Jeff, do something. So it's my job to keep other dogs away from my dogs. That's, that's the gist of it. That's the gist of it. Next. Um, James, I have a nine month old GSP. Is that too young to use any collar? James, you can start them at 14 weeks old, the way we train, which is with food. We start them on low level stim. You can train a 14 week old puppy on one. You're not correcting the dog, but it's all, it's all done on food training. But a nine month old, gosh, yeah, absolutely. Next. Yep. Next. Sorry. <laughs> I just love it when you say yep. that. Uh, Robin, have you ever considered opening multiple training centers across different states? Never. I will never do that. And I can actually say never. It's not my interest. I don't, I have, I have zero interest in that. I have, I have zero interest in having multiple training centers. I tour the world doing seminars that I've got a huge interest in, but running multiple locations, hell no. That's a ton of freaking work. A ton of work. Next. Jake. But thanks for asking. Jake says, Linda has done so many of these. I'm sure she could answer some of these questions at this point. She can answer probably most of these. In fact, most of my fans can answer most of these. Mm -hmm. Next. Maybe I should be a dog trainer. Um, Grant, how do I give... Uh, 
How do you give away free dog training without giving away too much where they don't need to hire you? Grant, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I give away everything I know. I give away tons of free dog training. I give away free tickets to my seminars. I do I do $100,000 in pro bono work every single year that I don't usually talk about. Nobody like nobody knows. I give away tons of Q&As. I do tons of videos. I give away so, more than half my day I give away for free creating free content. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Okay? That's how you do it. Just do it. Next. This one's from Maria. Yep. Jeff rocks. He's intense. Love you guys. Thanks, Maria. Um, Colorado girl. <clears throat> How do you stop dog on dog aggression with the e collar? Okay, that's a that's a very long. There's a that's a very, first of all, yes, use of e collar. I can't answer that on this because it is a very long answer. But I I do talk about it all the time. I'm not trying to hide or avoid this question. Yes, an e collar is going to be in it. Muzzles are going to be in it. High level e collar corrections are going to be in it. Dominant dogs are going to be in it. Leashes are going to be in it. But a highly skilled handler is going to be the most important thing that understands what the dogs are thinking, what the dogs are doing, and how to stop it, and then how to motivate them to not do it anymore. It is a. But if you're struggling with dog on dog aggression right now, if they're your own dogs, keep them apart, muzzle train them, and crate them. But what I don't want people to be doing is your dog's about to get into a dog fight and you just blast your dog or yank your dog because those things do get done, but I don't want just anybody to do that because there's a lot of variables. There's a lot of variables. And it's not that you're going to make it worse because there are, a dog fight already is worse. It's that there's a huge amount of stuff. So to me, what I would tell people to do is at a minimum, join my Patreon page. It's five bucks a month. It's not like I'm getting rich guys and I'm not trying to get money, but like I do offer that. And I also offer private one-on-one -on -one Skype sessions. But what you can do is forget about the aggression part for now. Watch all my videos and do everything that I teach. Everything, literally how I set up houses, the routine of a dog, the tools that I use, literally watch our work, watch our daily work. We work with fighting dogs at our training center every day. Watch the work we're doing because it's not just one thing. Next. Um, I don't think that Clover put Angela. Will. Okay. We got to finish the show though. Next. We should try to get her in here. Okay. Um, Robin. Can I correct arousal only in situations I know my dog is reactive to and not correct in arousal situations I know she's not reactive to? Will she get confused by this? I have to go. And okay, sure. Go ahead. So, um, so Robin, you, you, you can if you want. I prefer that if you corrected all arousal, though. All right? Jamal. Jamal says, thanks, I'll wait for our Skype. I do three demonstrations of corrections for jumping today with the rescues, dogs in a box store with no backlash. I won't push it to three demos or probably enough. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm proud of you though, Jamal, for getting out of your comfort zone and doing that. Stephanie, I completely um, am with you on using prong collars and e collars. I think my dog is just dramatic and very stubborn. I find myself yelling at her because I'm so aggravated. So, so Stephanie, yeah, if you're yelling at your dog, which... It's normal. I mean, it's whatever. We all yell at our dogs. Anybody that says they've never yelled at their dog is like, okay, well, all right. But but I mean, but if you're but if you're doing it out of frustration, that's one thing we don't do. That's why we love tools. You don't have to get frustrated with it. So if you're getting frustrated, take a step back, stop working your dog. Grant um Stephanie, any way to break through the stubbornness and, and make her do what I want, inspect from her? Should I raise the level of the e coward? You can raise the level of the e coward, yes. Um, Grant, yep. how to become a super fan? Won't let me pay you. Keep saying my comment is too long, then tries to charge me $25. Okay. I have no control over the money, but your comment being too long is because you're probably writing too long of a comment. So I know what happens is, I know what happens sometimes is when people write too long of a comment, then um, YouTube, if that's their platform. They don't allow it. As far as the fee, People have donated, I think, a dollar ninety nine here. I have no idea how that works. All I know is there's a little dollar sign there. I don't control any of that. Next. Uh, Megan says, done by. Great. Love you, Megan. We'll see you soon. Um, Jamal, Stephanie, Patreon, you'll get longer and better answers. Be more stubborn, less dramatic, and less aggravated. Great. Thanks, Jamal. Yeah, Jamal's a big Patreon fan. Next. Nathan, hi, guys. When I tell my dog to come with an e-collar and or clicker, 
She takes her time getting to me. Meanwhile, when I use break, she runs with full force. How do I get a quick recall? Okay, so first of clarification, <coughs> you shouldn't be using a clicker to get a dog to recall. A clicker is used to mark recall. Just want to, for full clarification, we clicker train dogs, guys. I, I use clickers. All my staff use clickers. So we were, we're actually food trainers as well. Like we do food training. But a clicker is a marker that's used after the dog has recalled, not to get the dog to recall. So a, a, a remote collar and a clicker are sort of semi-opposite. So the remote collar actually turns off when the dog has done something. The clicker actually turns on when the dog has done something, just for full clarification on how the actual, how the actual tools are used. So what I would do is if your dog's not motivated, food is a powerful motivator. Keep the dog on a leash. You can use a little bit of leash pressure and you can also up your stim a little bit, but I would do a combination of use food for training, not out of a bowl in a combination with a remote for recall training. Next. Um, James. Yep. Nine week old GSP, not nine month oh. old. That's a big freaking dick. Sorry for the typing Whoa, error. That's a big difference. 14 weeks old, you can start. Next. Um, Kiki. Yep. Super reactive when time to bathe dog will attack hose to get water. Done lots of impulse control work with it and still will blow through 100 on collar. I'm at a loss. So what I would do, Kiki, is I would bonk your dog. Bonker is a towel. Bonker is a towel. Just look it up, all right, how to use a bonker. And as soon as the first sight of the hose and if your dog gets aroused, what I would do is say no and you bonk, and you bonk the dog. Once the dog is already aroused, you're right. Your dog can blow through 100. Next. Um, Brant. Um, the keeper collar makes it so it won't fall off and you don't need to use a carabiner. Seems to be a perfect solution for weak and elderly owners. Oh, okay. So it sounded like a prong collar cover to me. Like I said, I don't use them. I've just seen collar covers. So, so Grant, here's, here's a, here's it. Here is it. If you like it, use it. It doesn't matter what I think, Grant. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't matter. But it sounded like you were describing a prong, a prong collar cover which I see, I've seen a lot of, and I don't like them. But if you like it and it works for you and it works for your clients, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what I think because here you are saying it works for me. It's great. That's all that matters, buddy. So just keep doing it. Just keep doing it next. Um, Missy May says, hi guys, you're the best. Hey, thanks. Missy May. Jamal. Grant, it's um, Grant. Just free free videos are enough to really run a business. I still pay for services. Why? Because he's valuable. Be valuable, and enough people will still come to you. There you go, Jamal. Thank you. Um, Javier, my dog's obedience is very good. With obedience. I took her to a dog park to test her on her social skills, and she will snap at them when they would sniff her. Yep, so just remember, no matter how well your dog's obedience is, it has nothing to do with your dog's behavior. Especially, first of all, please don't go to a dog park. Please, please, please don't go to a dog park. It's one of the most toxic places in the world. You know nothing about the other dogs. So your dog just looks like sniffing. Now, can that be, can that be made better? Absolutely, 100%, but not at a dog park. Next. Maria. Yep. Just wanted to share some success using your advice videos, etc. My seven-year-old son can stand next to my GSD puppy girl without her jumping all over him. Awesome. Good job, Maria. Thank you. And jumping, just let people know, jumping can be stopped in three seconds. I stopped jumping. We stop jumping quicker than we it takes to teach sit. That's how effective jumping is to stop it next. James, my nine-week-old GSP is peeing a lot. I have tried yep. to limit water intake and took her to the vet too to make sure she didn't have a UTI, but she continues to pee a lot in the house. What would you suggest? Um, so James, better. So first of all, you already get the UTI. Um, you can get another sample in, but I would just be careful. I would monitor the dog's water. Um, I would monitor the dog's water. And what I would do is put your dog on a schedule. The dog should be peeing in the house as far as like randomly anywhere because your dog should be crated on a slip lead with you. And it should be on a routine. Set up an Excel spreadsheet of the times of the day and the days of the week and put the and start documenting all the work. Start documenting all the work. All right, next. Um, I'm, oh, he also says, I'm working on crate training now only being able to hold her bladder for a maximum yep, of four that's, hours. So that's normal. 
that's 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 normal because it's nine weeks old. So everything is normal. Remember, nine week old puppy, buddy. I love you, but it's a lot of work. Four hours, that sounds normal. You're not gonna get much sleep. Next. 3 a.m. baby. 3 a.m. Get a good puppy raising book. Like get the monks of Newski. Get the monks of Newski puppy raising book. Mm. You know, whether you're a fan of Caesar or not, he's got a decent puppy raising book. Next. I'm sure there's plenty of other ones out there. Um, but you got your work cut out for you. Next. This one's from Lori. Yes, Grant, they are great for great. elderly because many people have problems with putting on and off prongs. Awesome. So there you go, Grant. One more person that uses them that thinks they're great. So again, doesn't matter what I think. We use for all of our, if that's what the issue is for elderly people, what we use is we'll use double um, uh, 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 little, um, not they're not carabiners, they're clasps. So we'll take off the chain and we'll put little clasps on there so that it's almost like unhooking a leash. So it's the same thing as unhooking a leash. So even folks with dexterity issues, they can still usually do that. But if you've got a collar out there that works for people with manual dexterity issues, definitely want to do it. Oh, we got a chat and then the message was retracted. Hmm, maybe it was too that, long. I don't know how that works. Next. Um, Nathan wants to know, what is GSP and GSD? Uh, GSP, German short hair pointer and German shepherd dog. Which is so redundant, huh? Yeah, well, <laughs> two different dogs. Um, Javier? Yep. Last question, Jeff. How can I make it better for her to stop and snapping at her dogs? What What does the protocol look like? Uh, Thank you. So if you're, Javier, if you're going to a dog park, she's snapping at the dogs because she's uncomfortable. But this is the thing. We do socialization at, at, at work. We show how we do socialization. I would not allow a strange dog to come up to my dog. That's the thing, because you don't know about those dogs. You don't know anything about those dogs. You have no idea if those dogs are going to, you know, say your dog snapped, which is normal. It's not acceptable, but it's normal. And all of a sudden that dog attacked your dog, literally attacked it. So, and then you have a dog fight. Now you're in the middle of a dog fight at a dog park. And then depending on the breed of your dog, because we are breed, like people get, you know, we, they do really, just like we have racial profiling, we've got breed profiling. So even if, even if your dog is the bully breed or the aggressive type dog um, and the other dog is a lab, like your dog's guilty. It's just the way it is. Um, so what you do is you have to start getting your dog used to other dogs. And the way you do that is we show it in our, um, uh, socialization videos. We've got socialization videos um, we show at our training center how we introduce dogs to other dogs. And we start the dog on a slip lead, we use a dressage whip, and we keep dogs away from our dog while we walk our dogs amongst other dogs by keeping other dogs away. You can't do that at a dog park. You can't tell people to, oh, keep your dog away from mine. It's like, what are you doing here? So you need to do it in a structured environment. Next. Uh, Lori sent us some hearts. Oh, thanks, Lori. Um, Aaron, my 12-week-old puppy is scared of adult dogs, I think, because one time I tied to a tree outside the home and I was doing work with Pitbull. I can't understand. Get close to him. Okay. So first of all, please don't ever tie your any dog up to a tree. I'm not against like, you know, we're not talking about chain tie-outs and stuff like that. I know why you did it. You did it because you didn't want your dog to run away. I understand why you did it. The problem is a loose dog came up to your dog. That's the bigger, and it's not because it was a pit bull. Like guys, most of my business is pit bulls. Like I'm not anti pit bull at all. But the, the but the the point is, um, but but the point is, is that what I if you're trying to keep your dog somewhere, it should be in a crate. It should be in a crate, or it could be it could have been on a leash tied to your wrist, right? So if you're outdoor doing chores and stuff, have it have it literally on a, a, a leash next to you, or put it in a crate, you know, underneath the shade somewhere, and have it with you. But definitely, you don't want to tie it out somewhere. Why? Because of because of just stuff happening, the world happening. Um, an off-leash dog can run into your yard. Somebody walking by your house with a, with a leash dog can run up to your dog. A couple of neighborhood kids can just be like, oh, puppy. They can run in and crowd your dog. All right, next. Nath, uh, Nathuli. Yep. Hi, guys. My two-year-old dogs keep dog keeps lunging at cars on walks. How do I stop this without an e-collar? Oh, you can stop it without an e-collar. You can fully train a dog without an e-collar. 
I mean, they've been doing it for thousands of years, right? They've been doing it for thousands of years. You don't have to use a pinch cower. They've been doing that for thousands of years. You know, you can train your dog with a slip lead, um, a slip lead, a towel, and a bag of treats. That's literally how you can train your dog. But, well, why don't you do that, Jeff? Why? Because it takes a lot of time and most owners aren't going to do it. You know, most owners aren't going to do it. So what you can do is, is start, first of all, at least a minimum of though, of have a prong collar on your dog because it makes training easier. So it makes training a lot easier. And then what you're going to do is um, have your dog. And as soon as you start seeing a car come, if you see any arousal in the dog, if you see any arousal in the dog, what I want you to do, um, what I want you to do is then you're going to move your dog away. Move your dog away from uh, uh, the uh, the car, meaning pop it. Don't walk away. Just pop it. Next. Okay, we have Grant. Here. Grant, and then we got to stop because we're at an hour. Next. Well, what can I tell clients to make sure their dogs do not run away at the sight of prong collar aside from counter conditioning? Should I be telling my clients to put the prong on and off randomly? Um. Yeah. I mean, tell them to tell them to put a slip lead on their dog. Tell them to put a slip lead on their dog and then train the collar, train the collar on and off. Uh, the dog, and if it's also, if you make it a food protocol, the dog should be excited about the prong. It's not just the prong. We have dogs that run away from every collar. So, but you do that, put a slip lead on the dog. So you put a slip lead on the dog and then literally like train the collar command. Collar on, you can click, give a treat, collar off, click, give a treat or the dog's daily food and you can do that. All right. So we got to go. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Jeff Gelman of Solid Canine Training, madly in love with you, and take care. Bye-bye.